Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited, Mooney's Ovation Ultra makes its first flight, commercial moon flights may soon be approved, FAA publishes details on their ADSB Out rebate program. I'm Brie Cross, it's June 9th, 2016, and this is Airborne Unlimited. Mooney Aircraft says their first Ovation Ultra airplane made its initial test flight last weekend. The flight was made out of Kerrville Municipal Airport with Mooney Chief Test Pilot Mike Miles at the controls. The flight lasted for about one hour. The Ovation Ultra test plane airplane is a fully FAA conforming certification aircraft. Miles reported that performance and handling were excellent. The airplane will continue test flights as it progresses through the certification process. The airplane was first shown at a Mooney event in Texas in February of this year. Their Ultra line of airplanes feature an enlarged cockpit and a left cockpit door. Mooney says this plane will be the first FAA certified Ovation Ultra. They also tell us we can look forward to both the new Acclaim and Ovation Ultra to make their public appearance at AirVenture 2016. The first private space mission to go beyond Earth's orbit may soon get the blessing of the U.S. government, according to sources familiar with the details. The Wall Street Journal reports that the government may soon give a green light to commercial space ventures wanting to attempt an unmanned moon mission. If it does so, it would eliminate the regulatory barriers faced by companies like Moon Express, which hopes to fly to the moon sometime next year. Moon Express is among the companies competing for the Google Lunar X Prize, which is offering $20 million for the first company that can land a robotic spacecraft on the moon, travel across its surface, and transmit pictures back to Earth. The government decision would set precedents for how Washington would assure that non-governmental entities would comply with international space treaties. It could apply to missions ranging from pure exploration to commercial mining of asteroids and tracking space debris. After the break, read the fine print for the FAA ADSB Out rebate program. There's a difference between charting a steady course and pushing for the ceiling. And for nearly a century, Hartzell Propeller has been defining that difference. It's in our passion for engineering and research and our dedication to testing the limits of performance. We are built on honor. We are Hartzell Propeller. Redbird is quickly becoming the industry standard for flight training. Since Redbird introduced its revolutionary FMX in 2007, colleges, universities, and flight training operations around the world have integrated Redbird products into their curriculum. It's time to discover what Redbird can do for you. Join the migration. Welcome back. If you have a story suggestion for Airborne Unlimited, Aero TV, our website or podcast, just email to news-spy at aero-news.net. Yesterday, we reported that the FAA has established a rebate program for the installation of ADSB Out equipment. Now, the FAA has released a fact sheet outlining details of the program. And as is typical with FAA details, you must read the fine print in order to qualify for the $500 rebates. The aircraft eligible for rebates are defined as U.S. registered, fixed wing, single engine piston aircraft. Rebates are not available for aircraft already equipped or for which the FAA already has paid or committed to upgrade, and aircraft owners will only qualify for the rebates if the installation is scheduled after the FAA begins offering the rebates. Also included is a requirement for the airplane to demonstrate the operation of the equipment through test flying. The detail states that the avionics must be certified to FAA technical standard orders. It has been established that experimental aircraft are not required to have TSO equipment, but the wording of the rebate requirement indicates that non-TSO installation would not be eligible for the rebates. This report only scratches the surface of the fine print, and anyone interested in obtaining the rebate needs to get all the details before making a move. It's Thursday, which means that it's time for an Aero Community Update, highlighting news and information about the incredible people and organizations that populate the Airborne Partnership Initiative behind Airborne Unlimited. In previous editions of our Aero Community Update, we've introduced you to our Airborne Partnership Initiative. Our partnership is coming together and includes some incredible representatives from all aspects of aviation and aerospace. Our first opportunity to put this to a test was at EAA AirVenture 2015, where we joined with one of our partners, the Experimental Aircraft Association, to add a new feature to AirVenture. We called it the AirVenture Innovation Preview, or simply the AIP. The intent was to provide aviation industries represented at AirVenture a broad international forum to present their innovations. 
Working closely with EAA, we gave it a test flight, and to say it flew well would be an understatement. The result was a two-hour, professionally produced, high-definition quality video divided into two segments. The program was so successful, we ran a similar program with our partners at Sun and Fun 2016, and it is scheduled again for an expanded format for the upcoming AirVenture 2016. These successful partnerships will continue to grow, and there's more exciting things coming in the future. After these messages, lack of ice protection led to the crash. Concorde's recombinant gas RG series sealed battery technology produces a high performance battery with the advantages of being pre-tested and fully charged at the factory. Find out more about Concorde's entire line of batteries at www.concordbattery.com. Concorde, the heart of your aircraft. Sandia introduces the new SAI 340 Quattro TSO'd airspeed, attitude, altitude, and slip. With integral backup battery, safety never looked so good. See it now at www.sandia.aero. Welcome back. With so much news coming out of the aviation industry, we're summarizing some other interesting stories in a brief segment we call Around the Patch. The NTSB has issued its findings regarding the crash of an Embraer EMB 500 Phenom on December 8, 2014. They found that the crew failed to turn on de-icing equipment, which led to ice accumulation, an aerodynamic stall, and then the crash. Colorado Heliops has formed a new industry partnership with nearby Morgan Community College that will allow students to achieve an associate's degree while earning their pilot certificates. Their program can be applied to veterans seeking to obtain helicopter flight training. Hartzell Propeller has received an amended STC for installation of their five-blade composite swip tip prop on Finoff Aviation PT6A 67P engine upgrades for Pre and G Pilatus PC12s. This is the same propeller that is used on the latest models of the Pilatus. A team searching for the 31-year-old crash site of Eastern Airlines Flight 980 in Bolivia has made a discovery. Search team members claim they have discovered fragments of metal-colored international orange that are possibly the lost flight recorders. NASA's Hubble Space Telescope has discovered that the universe is expanding 5% to 9% faster than expected. Astronomers claim this may be a clue to understanding those parts of the universe that make up to 95% of everything and don't emit light. Well, that's the trip around the patch. Now let's move on to the rest of the news. The lack of coherent federal regulations regarding the operation of UAVs has once again led to the precipitous action against a UAV operator. Commercial pilot David Quinones has had his pilot certificate suspended by the FAA over a UAV action. Quinones was flying his UAV on the beach in Coney Island in Brooklyn, New York, while the Nathan's Hot Dog Eating Contest was underway. And while Quinones says he was standing on a public beach flying over private property and not anywhere near the contest, police arrested him, confiscated his aircraft, and put him in jail for several hours, according to a report from the website Motherboard. In the end, no charges were filed. Much later, Quinones got a letter from the FAA saying his commercial pilot certificate was being suspended for three months and he was ordered to surrender his pilot's license to an FAA attorney or face daily fines of $1,100. The FAA would not comment specifically on the case, but did cite an FAA internal order that gives the agency the authority to suspend manned airman privileges for UAV violations. Well, that's our program for today. Remember to get comprehensive real-time 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net. Remember that Airborne Unlimited is streamed daily Monday through Friday with additional breaking news bulletins for important stories that fall outside of our normal deadlines. Please join us in the growing roster of over 100 outstanding industry associations and organizations every weekday for the best in aviation and aerospace news from the staff of the Aero News Network the aviation world's most comprehensive news and information resource.